Hello everyone. Welcome to Health and Learning. I'm Sarisha. Today we are going to look at the role of women in economic development of India. So this is a general topic which comes under General Studies Paper 1 pertaining mainly to current affairs rather than core topics. Let's begin by looking at some reports. These reports are important for prelims as well. India ranks 112 out of 153 on the World Economic Forum's Gender Gap Index. According to India's 2011 census, the sex ratio for children under 6 was 914 females to 1000 males, which is a decline from 927 in 2001. The ranking of Indian women in economic empowerment is 0.35 where 1 means equality. Currently, the participation of women in the workforce in India is one of the lowest globally. India ranks 120 among 131 countries in female labor force participation rates. The female labor force participation rate in India fell from 31.2% in 2011 to 12 to 23.3% in 2017 to 18. This decline has been sharper in rural areas where the female LFPR fell by more than 11% points in 2017 to 18. Even employed females are more in informal economy. At 17% of GDP, the economic contribution of Indian women is less than half the global average. There has also been an increase of more than 7% in the gross enrollment ratio of women in higher education in this period from 17.9% in 2010 to 11 to 25.4% in 2019 but it is still low when compared to opposite gender, which is around 27%. Now let's move on to the reasons for this disparity that we see. Despite the rise in education and skill sets of women, there is a decrease in the labor force participation rate of women. And why is this? The reasons are, Lack of access to safe and secure workplaces, widespread prevalence of poor and unequal wages. They not only get unequal pay for equal work, but many jobs that women do are categorized as low skill jobs for which lower wages are paid. For example, men usually do weaving, which is better paid, while spinning, usually done by women, is low paid. Low social acceptability of women working outside the household or working outside home on the same terms and conditions as men does not absorb them from their domestic responsibilities. As a result, the dual burden of work exerts physical, mental and emotional strain on them. One of the consequences of double burden may be delayed promotions or sacrificing new job opportunities due to family responsibilities. A lack of decent and suitable job as previously said, majority of them work in subsistence, agriculture or domestic workers. A recent study has shown that women with moderate to high level of education do not want to do manual work outside the household and prefer salary jobs but they are low in number. For example, according to NSSO, the proportion of women among professionals, managers and clerical workers is only about 15%. Higher concentration of girls is found in humanities and social sciences rather than vocational and technical courses. There is less physical mobility among women after marriage. So having said that, these economic conditions can be a result of social conditions of women. In India, we often see women after they get married migrate to other places which obviously affect their involvement in a fixed job. Also, we see in our daily lives how much women contribute to our sustainability as a society. But sadly, this is, uh, contribution is not valued qualitatively or quantitatively. There is no such index or formula to evaluate it. But India must turn the tide that is the fall in labor force participation and decreasing employment for women to realize its uh, development potential. So government has taken various initiatives. Now let's look at various initiatives taken by government. The first is STEP, Support to Training and Employment Program for Women. The STEP scheme was set up to provide skills to women so that they can take up gainful employment. 
it also provides the right competencies and training for women to become entrepreneurs under the purview of ministry of women and child development the government launched maila e heart in 2016 it is a bilingual online marketing portal uh, that leverages technology to help aspiring women entrepreneurs self help groups and ngos to showcase their products and services the third is mahila shakti kendra this is to empower rural women with opportunities for skill development employment digital literacy health and nutrition the mahila shakti kendras will work through community engagement the other one is working women hostel to ensure availability of safe convenient accommodation for working family along with daycare facilities for their children wherever possible in urban semi urban and rural areas so to conclude that it's hard to develop in an inclusive and sustainable way when half of the population is not fully participating in the economy and india could boost its growth by 1.5 percentage points per year if around 50% of women could join the workforce and also achieve its goal of a 5 trillion dollar economy you can find this notes and helpful information on help in learning website thank you